of news and men. Hey, welcome to the podcast, episode three. This is Darian, and I'm here with my co-host Andy. Say hi, Andy. Hi, Andy. We're here with the special guest, Chris from Strung Out. Hey, Chris. Hi, guys. Thanks for coming <laughs> down, dude. I know it's a long drive. Hey, it's not a long drive. It's it's uh, it's an all right drive, and um, it was a very scenic drive. And I'm happy to be here. Thanks. <laughs> well, for I know me, guys. I know you're coming from a way cooler, like hipper area, <laughs> so it's cool that you came down to the little people, you know, the flatlands. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah. You know, you know, it's all good. <laughs> um, you want to dive right in? Kind of a slow week for news, huh? No, I think we got some good stuff. <laughs> Let's see what we got. You want to start with the first story, Andy? Yes. Um, I don't know where this is, but we'll find out shortly. Uh, a 23-year-old man arrested after <laughs> after flashing his breast implants at fellow Walmart shoppers. <laughs> his wait, his breast implants. Yes. That's a 23-year-old man. Hey, okay, you know what, Chris? This brings me to something. <laughs> You've been all around the world. You you traveled everywhere. Um, what do you do when you roll into a U.S. city and you you got tons of time on your hands? Go to Walmart. Exactly. <laughs> and and I'm sure you've seen some ungodly Dude. looking people. Like Walmart is it's it's like it's like the church. It's like it's like the bands. You know, it's where you go. It's like but it, but it's like a magnet for total freak shows. It is, and for. Yeah, exactly. It's like the people that work there too in some of these cities really? in the Midwest. Oh yeah, it's incredible, and um, yeah, it's definitely a, a spectacle. We got to show you. There's this website I used to like to go to a lot. It's called uh, People of Walmart, but I call it <laughs> Creatures of Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure you've seen some of those people in there. It's like, oh yeah, welcome to Walmart. How may I help yeah. you? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty awesome. So what what's going on with the story? Like, read a little bit. Let's of it. see. Uh, that sounds kind Jeremy of Owens. 23-year-old Pennsylvania man was busted following the bizarre incident at the retail store in Lackawanna County. Um, he was arrested after he left the store and boarded a municipal bus from which he had to be forcibly removed. <laughs> put him on the bus so he could flash people on the bus. Nice. Forcibly removed. <laughs> Oh man, how do you flash? What is wrong with this guy? So he has breast implants. Is he like? Is he a transgender this guy? This is a like, picture of him. He yeah yeah he's, he's a he's a he's, sheep yeah, yeah but, but sheep. the thing that trips me he. out is it, it says <laughs> I'm checking it out now. It says the female was identified and found out to actually be a male <laughs> named Jeffrey Christopher <laughs> Oates. Ah, that's, yeah. I guess that's the tran- transgender world we're living in. Yeah, you know, I mean. I mean, more power to everyone in, with whatever they want in their life, you know, or do in their life. But um, to go to Walmart and flash it, it's kind of like, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> come on. That's a it's little like, bit out yeah, of line, maybe. It's like, I'm all about you doing your thing, but you have to go into Walmart and flash in front of, like, someone's kid or, you know. <laughs> yeah, or, that's or, or the thing. That, or the it's like tons of kids in, in there, right? Yeah, tons of kids, you know. And, you know maybe, you know, I just want a chicken McNugget, you know, at Walmart. I don't want to see <laughs> I just want my... I just want my 56 <laughs> roll of toilet paper yeah. package. I just want, you know, my simple things, not to deal with this complex, you know, you know, tragic event now. I mean, that, that could scar someone. I mean, I mean Walmart so. should be, a, you know, a, a fun experience, you know. I don't think it ever is a fun experience ever <laughs> I mean, it's always, in it's any always, part of the country. I guess it's always an interesting experience. Yeah, it's interesting, but it's interesting for us because we go there just to check it out. We're not like trying to shop or anything. <laughs> yeah. I pretty much yeah. It's, it's kind of like, yeah, it's like when you're on tour and you're stopping at, you know, the same, the pretty much the same gas station every like three hours. You're like, I wonder what kind of Pringles they have in here. Yeah. You know, like at Walmart, you're you, like, but you know, it's the other thing that fascinated me. Like when I used to go on tour, I was totally fascinated by truck stops. Oh yeah. Cause they're Flying so J. insanely huge. Yeah. And there, you can get any possible thing and they have mm-hmm. shower. Do you ever use the showers there? I never use the showers there. I but, uh, I'm scared. Yeah. <laughs> totally I definitely, I've wa- I washed clothes there before. But uh, they and, have uh, like little places you can sleep, some of them. Yeah. Like a little tiny cubicle. I guess it'd be like a hotel in Tokyo. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so like, like a little cube, just a little, <laughs> put them in the oven. Yeah. yeah. That's rad. Yeah. Truck stops rule, man. Flying J. Uh, yeah. Those in Walmarts is like yeah. fascinating. Loves. That's, a, that's yeah. a good one. Pilot. Pilot. Good times. So uh, let's check out the next story. What do you got? <laughs> But <laughs> I'm still I'm still in Walmart still land right now. Walmart? I'm thinking about walking down the we aisle. We can move back like, to it. Where, where did that happen? At? Like, <laughs> we're like we're like what? Actually, what section of the store is that? Was it like in the toys? I'm, or was I'm it like, thinking frozen foods. Was it frozen <laughs> foods? <laughs> <laughs> Honey, you, you want some fanny cans? Whoa! <laughs> Pretty harsh man sues wife for being ugly. This is out of China. No, that's <laughs> <laughs> sued wife for being. Well, Let's just this. say he had a choice in the you matter. Better, right? You better read that story. Okay, it. it says 
It's the ugliest divorce case in legal history. Uh, when <laughs> husband Jim Fang saw his newborn baby for the first time, he was oh horrified. <laughs> I'm going to show this to Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. That's the same chick. Whoa. Yeah. It says the girl was so ugly, he refused to believe he and his stunning wife could have produced such an ugly child. So she pulled a fast one on him. <laughs> She's all, I'll take the makeup off and show you. She got. <laughs> she got Dude, well, go ahead weird, and read it. This is a weird story. Um, or you want me to read it? Yeah. You're pausing my, a lot. My reading Something's is going on with you terrible. Today. Oh, actually, you know what? This podcast may suck reader. because. Andy brought the wrong drinks, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm blaming him fully if it's not good. Um, okay, when, when, when husband John Fang saw his newborn baby for the first time, he was horrified. The girl was so ugly he refused to believe he and his stunning wife could have produced such a child. And he rounded on his partner, accusing her of having an affair, but she told him the terrible truth. Her good looks were due to <laughs> 62,000 pounds of plastic surgery. That's English money for those of you out wow. there. And the baby was indeed theirs. Furious Fang took her to, <laughs> <laughs> took her to court claiming she had tricked him into marriage and won his lawsuit. That oh, is awesome. Sorry, but and then here's the best part. He goes, I married my wife out of love. <laughs> but but as soon as we had our first daughter, we began having marital issues. Our daughter was incredibly so, so basically ugly he, to the point he married this chick who thought me. it was a totally hot chick, but she was like totally Pamela Anderson out to the Did you hills. say his name's Fang? Yeah. F-E-N-G. It, there's a part you're all Furious Fang. Yeah. That, that's that's, awesome. that, that's a great band name right there. Yeah. It we is. are Furious Fang. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is so gnarly. I mean, what do you do in that situation? <sighs> Chicks do that all the time. Plastic surgery. Yeah, I mean, Jesus. Uh, That's why I think, you know, I think you should always propose at a nudist club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just propose to her when, you know, when it's morning before she puts makeup on. Mm-hmm. You know, that's when you get the truth, you know. And yeah, right but see, after it's sex. not the truth because she's all, <laughs> then you, you have your kid and it's like how she actually was. I guess yeah. you can just save up, start saving now for plastic surgery for the kid, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, it's only with how old's a kid, you know, a few months. So just yeah. start putting, you can save a lot start, of start putting a dollar away every month. Yep. Buy a bunch of clothes at Walmart. Pounds and then, you know, by that by the time the kid goes grows surgery. up. They'll have to come to America to get plastic surgery because it'll be totally cheap and, and expensive in China. Yeah, and hopefully by then Walmart will have its own plastic surgery section in <laughs> yeah. the store too. <laughs> right and then the flashing, flashing would be a tremendous yeah. problem. Yeah, <laughs> Can you imagine the amount of flashes in there. Like they'll be like there'll be like, like like a new sign like no shoplifting, you know, and then no flashing, no flashing, no like no trench coat people. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I mean, at that point they'll probably have. <laughs> They probably have like the TSA in Walmart. Oh, yeah, <laughs> like they have to like check you in, <laughs> yeah. turn around, serve, check your keys, take all your medals out of your pocket. Yep. You know, and keep you from flashing. Through. Jesus, L- let's give Andy another chance at a story, at reading a story. <laughs> I hope I don't have to read them all. That would suck. <laughs> okay, um, let's see. November eighth, thanks to this past weekend's daylight saving time switch, an Ohio what's, man. What's the uh, <laughs> what's the title? <laughs> oh, sorry. A uh, man and two drunk driving busts at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> is the picture is about? incredible. In what is guy. that about? Oh, dude. That's awesome. Man and two... You got to talk into the mic, Chris. Okay, okay sorry. I had to look over at the... <laughs> Thanks to the past weekend's daylight savings time switch, an Ohio man was arrested for two separate drunk driving incidents at the same time early Sunday morning. <laughs> Wait, What? <laughs> So uh, he got arrested at, at two in the, the morning. Same exa- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> two tickets with the same time. That's oh, awesome. Oh, man. Whammy. He was first spot pulled over by an Urba- Urbana, Urbana cop uh, when he was spotted driving an Oldsmobile the wrong way in an alley. Sweet. Um, that was at 1.08 a.m. by an officer who reported that he reeked of booze and had glassy eyes. Yeah, so then he let him go. Keep yeah, driving. Yeah. You're That's okay. awesome. <laughs> Well, it's just an alley. Keep going. Yeah. Let's see. As it turned out, his mouth was filled with pennies, that old wives' tale that, oh, yeah. you know, you, you can't smell booze if you're chewing on pennies. I'm not a super pro, so I don't know that. Go ahead and tell me that. <laughs> That's going to... I've been told. Yeah. Um, I then advised Niles that pennies in the mouth were a myth and that it did not help 
in taking a breath test. Just give them dysentery. Oh. So let that be a lesson to everybody out there. Don't put pennies in your mouth. Why the hell would you oh, so <laughs> do that? It's, it's so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> I mean, I wonder, is it like was it 40 ch- pennies or yeah, like, like a couple? Um, was it I, pennies he found outside weird. like in the alley? Actually counted them. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> there yeah. it got to be from or, the Were they like the, those pennies that are like in your, in your, they're in your cup the, holder? In, that no, are like, no, not the cup They're in the ashtray. And they, they're like in the ashtray and they're just like, there's like, Shit all over him. Yeah. You know, it's awesome. Like... <laughs> so he was uh, he was cited, issued citations, and released to an adult. But because <laughs> of the time change at two a- two a.m., it turned back to one a.m. Right. So um, at one o eight, exactly one hour after the first stop, Reese was driving his patrol car and backed out of a spot rapidly. Blah, blah, blah. Let's see. You're killing it right Dude, now, I, Andy. There's too much dead time. Too much junk on this. I'm trying to get <laughs> to the next it. time he was actually finish your arrested. drink. Do yourself a favor and finish your drink right now. <laughs> okay, you read for me. Where do you leave off? <laughs> <laughs> okay, at 1 a.m. exactly an hour after the first stop, Reese was driving his patrol car in Urbana's municipal parking lot when a vehicle backed out of a spot rapidly and nearly collided with my cruiser. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Good plan. Good plan. He's high on pennies. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's penny dirt. Yeah, he's he's copper party. So uh, Reese quickly determined that Gammons was behind the wheel. I asked Niles why he was driving, <laughs> because he was under suspension and still intoxicated. Gammons replied that his friend had picked him up and dropped him off and refused to take him home. Cause so that's reek- a good reason to get in the car and drive drunk in front of a car. Because he reeked of pennies. Yeah. I can't. I can't drive it. You smell. <laughs> then, in a sterling example of intoxicated logic, this is always good. Gavin's <laughs> explained that he was afraid of getting arrested for public intoxication, so he decided to drive. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> this guy is awesome, man. Well, I mean, he's in the history books for getting. Two tickets at the same time. That's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, the, he should actually be awarded. 108, 108, 108. Yeah, so dude. how do you only get tickets for driving yeah, I mean, that influence? must be... Wait, what state what, is this what, in? Yeah, where was Ohio. It? Ohio. And not only did how, he get I tickets... I guess that's how they roll out there. They just mm. release you instantly. He was underage because he was released to an adult. Yeah, right? that's true, yeah. So. No, it says he's 22 right here. Oh. But he was just really super mentally crippled, so they had to... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> This guy's gonna be crazy. You're sucking on pennies. Just yeah. At least in some random adult. I mean, I guess it's a, like half a notch above huff and paint, but yeah. I mean, <laughs> really, but what the hell? He was in an alley at the first time, then he's in a parking lot pulling out of a spot. Like he's just I feel like he's doing drugs. He's just doing drugs too, or something. Know. You know, you're in that, alleys at there. or you can be super morning. Hammered. Dude, yeah, what's hammered, what is yeah. it? I mean, he first got he was driving the wrong way down an alley, but what was that whole rash that we had of like? Drunken celebrity chicks driving the wrong way oh, on the God. freeway. How do you get on the wrong way on the freeway? <sighs> that's, that's I mean, the ramps scary. over here, you can't even do that, I don't think. But, uh, yeah, that, that's insane. That was uh, Nicole Richie, that one she happened. It was like, yeah, um, but I think Lindsay did it maybe mm-hmm. one time too or something. Yeah, that, sure. that's oh, man, How that's do scary. you get on it's the freeway incredible. the wrong way? How do you go, oh my God, all these people are driving the wrong way <laughs> coming right at me? Yeah, you know, it's <laughs> kind of funny because there's times, I mean, even those times when I was drinking where I'd be so blacked out drunk where I would wake up the next day and be at my house and go, how'd I get here? And then I go to my car and I go, whoa, there's like tons of Jack in a Box in my car. I'm like, I guess I want the Jack in a Box <laughs> You know, and I'm like, how'd that happen? But What's this ketchup I, all over my yeah, face? Yeah, exactly. And But like, I went there. So I knew I... I was on autopilot and I still drove, went to the drive through, paid money, and right. ate a few things. But uh, yeah, but going, getting, but on, the getting freeway, on the freeway the wrong way. I mean, that's insane. That's that's like a whole. That's stupid. I, I just can't <laughs> understand it because I mean, usually the on ramp is like, yeah, uh, especially I, in in the in the valley, they're totally separated. Yeah, it's it not like, like on both ways it's like oh, you're only going one way yeah it's pretty hard to really mess so that you'd up. have to find an off ramp and go i think that might be the on ramp yeah. and then drive totally backwards the wrong way <laughs> yeah that's just I mean, so gnarly i just I, can't I was always fascinated by that like how can that possibly... yeah how it's the only person i ever known who whoever did that was john candy and plane trains and automobiles yeah that's, you know, that, was that was sweet that was great <laughs> i lived that actually I, we, I was in some downtown you know when you're on tour and you're trying to drive around some unknown city yeah and in the downtown section it's all one-way streets oh, so yeah. you'd make a turn and then all of a sudden there's all these cars coming yeah, at you honking ah! and then <laughs> some dude Lake going city. hey you're going the wrong way <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that happens to me all the time in downtown. I, I, it's, I've been there five years now, and I, 
I'm just starting to get used to it because I hate spots. it, dude. It's I've, a I've lived here my whole life. I can't even <laughs> drive down there. Dude, it's, it's, insane. it's a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What do we get next? Uh, what do we have next? Oh, Thailand. This oh. should be a good one. Monks on meth. Yeah, okay. This, this, this really... Well, this is all these great band names. This totally Monks on meth. pisses me off. That's <laughs> another great band name. This is, a, this is super pissing me off because I wanted to go to Thailand because it's like totally chill, you know, Buddhist. Everybody's like really relaxed, beautiful country and everything. Cheap. And now we got freaking tweakers out there. <laughs> That's why I want to go to Thailand is get away from the tweakers. Isn't that what tweakers do? They'll, they'll shave their head after a while because they think they have bugs. I don't know. So it kind of fits with a monk. They're just their head Yeah, shaved. maybe they got an infiltrator, huh? Yeah, they, they got a mole. They got a, <laughs> they got a mole. Go, go ahead and read it. Read the story. Let's see. If there's a substance that contradicts Buddhism's promotion of gentleness and moderation, it's probably meth. Oh, yeah. But in Thailand, a 95% Buddhist nation, the press of late has been filled with accounts of monks busted for using and even selling speed tablets. Oh, my God. Wow. So that not only are they tweaking, they're like tweaking like <laughs> 70s tweaking, yeah. like truck driver style. Wow. <laughs> That's Go <awful>. ahead. <laughs> Come on. Truck Hold together, Eddie. <laughs> uh, the latest case was reported in Bangkok uh, Post. Involves two monks attempting to ditch twenty meth pills <laughs> Dude, at a police checkpoint. I, I just have this <laughs> vision right now of like monks in their like in garb, the you know, like running and tossing these <laughs> <laughs> cops chasing after them. Oh, it's dude. like so. That's not like that's like out of a skit from SNL or something. That's yeah, that's yeah, genius. Exactly. <laughs> like you couldn't even come up with that. Yeah, story. I would never thought that. Like, <laughs> like run, run, run. <laughs> Like they're they're like down some alley and then yeah. the cops roll up and they're like they split you know like one time, watch out it's five zero. But I, I mean, where is their thinking? Like, were they expecting to get searched? They're monks. Like, yeah, where were they going to stash it? <laughs> I guess it's a rampant problem now. <laughs> Apparently, but here's a here's another good part. It says that's nothing compared to the monk that's profiled in Thai language paper. Blah. Um, he was Com- arre- What is it? Kamchat <laughs> Luke. Yeah, something like that. He was arrested recently for dealing speed at his temple. That's sweet. Well, just think of how many people you got coming in. It's perfect, perfect deal. Wow. But I mean, this sucks, man. Now tweakers have ruined Thailand. Yeah. Come on, <laughs> Jesus Christ! Damn you, tweakers! Damn tweakers! They're ruining, ruining all the fun shit. <laughs> I like this. Both are outdone by the seven monks who, according to Thai lang- language daily news. Scored 10 bottles of booze, 25 perverse video discs, <laughs> and a stash of speed and ice. <laughs> ice, ice, oh boom, pow. <laughs> In preparation for a drug party. Now, I, what, what's up with, I, I don't get it. I thought you are just supposed to like meditate and get like in touch with your inner self. Yeah, you, that's. You just, now it's like meditating porn, and sp- <laughs> tweak, and booze. <laughs> what, what? <laughs> I think they're losing their flock, man. Oh Somewhere they, they went astray. Dude, that is that is awesome. <laughs> it's totally metal. How do those how do those meditations This is go like down? this is like the Motley Crue monks or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's cuz they're not they're all dirt. high on opium anymore. Mhm. That's yeah, I guess that's what's happening, right? Their opium's getting cut off. Yeah. Does it say something about that? It just says the opium use is fading. Um, and cheap meth is well established as Southeast Asia's hard drug of choice. Mm. They, they said, oh, Replace you mean you can make this in a bathtub? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, baking soda? What? <laughs> hey, hey, Chris, don't tell the whole recipe. <laughs> I only tried it once. <laughs> it blew up my apartment. I hate it when that happens. Uh, remember, remember when you were having a rash of like explosions in Compton and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> that was, I think that's died down a little bit, but that's pretty terrible, man. Just like, but it was really terrible because like kids are getting killed and stuff. Yeah, that's, like, that's insane. Yeah. Don't make meth in your family house. Yeah. <laughs> that's so basic good. logic, but I guess not. But that, yeah, it goes with that drunken logic that dude had, you know? Yeah. It's never too drunk to walk, so I drove. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, that's insane. Monks on meth, furious fang, live tonight at the Palladium. <laughs> that does sound like a, a bill from LA or something. <laughs> so, what have you been up to, Chris? Give us a little bit of about. Uh, well, I've been hanging out with my with my monk friend. Yeah, you know, 
you know you got living. any like musical projects with your monk buddies <laughs> yeah we're called a meth meth party <laughs> <laughs> meth porn party every, yeah. every song's meth like porn. 248 or you know beats per minute it's just fucking fast shit, fast <laughs> fast shit. <laughs> uh nothing man i've uh, actually nothing I, i've been doing a lot i uh well as some people might know i, I got out of rehab uh just over a month ago um I, I missed the last strung out tour because I, I needed to get better. I, I was having a lot of problems with drugs and alcohol, and um, it was, I've been battling it for years. And, uh, you know, it wasn't a problem years ago, but it really turned into a problem the last few years. And it was just, it was taking my life over. So um, it was a hard thing to do, man. It's a really challenging thing to really, you know, obviously, one thing to not go on tour with my band. That was really hard. Yeah, totally. You know, I've never missed a show ever. Um, but I mean, is is that something that's really challenging on the road because you're just totally surrounded? How rampant would you say it was? Is is like when you go on the road with a bunch of bands, is it like everybody's getting jacked up? Or is yeah, it, is it, it it's it's definitely it's definitely you know it's it's there you know. And that's I guess just, I guess also kind of bands that are into getting jacked up tour yeah. with other bands. Yeah. <laughs> Very that. true. I mean, our, our band. So you name could is... probably tour with the Silver Band if you really wanted yeah. to seek one out. But uh, I mean, what's it, the name yeah. of your band? Yeah, what? exactly. Our band's called uh, Strung Out. Let me, let me tell you, that, that was a hit in rehab. They're like, Bro, what's your band called? I'm like, uh. like, it was like, what was your first clue? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I joined the band. Uh, yeah, it was, it's funny. Like with, with me over the last few years, I was weird because I, I when I go on tour, that's like the time I would sober up because I'd like want to perform really good that's cool. and just be good, you know, be you know really true to my fans. Yeah, and that, just, you know, that's not punk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because I did it for a long time. I, I guess I got sick of like. Being hung over on tour and having to perform, you know, having to give that hour a night, right, and right. really just do it. And I was like, I can't do it. And I'm wasted or on speed or on low, <laughs> yeah. you know, or you know, or on it 18. makes you want to become a monk. Yeah, it makes you want to like do do monk, you know, monk meth. But uh, yeah, but it's weird. Like my thing with tr- the last few years was like I would be on tour and I wouldn't do anything. But when I come home, it's when I, you know, after like a week of being home, I'd be bored and kind of go, ah, oh, well, I don't have my stage to go to every night. And I'd do it. You know, like I kind of knew I should have done rehab a few years ago, and people kept telling me, "Dude, you should have rehab." And I was like, "No," because you know you have that ego. Like you want to think yeah, you can do it yourself. Yeah, right, no, right. I got this. You know, then yeah, it's hard. It's hard to do that without the the support. Yeah, you know, you know exactly. People, and so. with, with the therapy part too, you know, it's funny too because therapy is not like the masculine thing you do. You know, when I mean, I've had a, you know previous girlfriend going, "You should be in therapy." You know, you should. Dude, I thought therapy was like a trend now. Yeah, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> I totally talk to Drew. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Uh, but I, I mean, for me, it, it's, 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 I mean, it was wondrous because you know you have someone that doesn't. It's someone I can talk to honestly, and not feel right. like being judged, and I can spill everything out. And I got a lot of stuff out I had no idea about. And generally. the cool thing about therapy is you're in there going, "There's no way that this is the worst story he this guy's ever." Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, totally. yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's. Yeah, I was definitely thinking that for sure. But um, it was it was definitely hard, man. That first week, you know, just every emotion under the sun. You know, I'm at this detox house out in um out in Ventura, you know, and it was just like, it was, it was gnarly, man. <laughs> and I was like, you know, you know, you feel like a loser, you know, you do. But, you know, then I sort of think, no, I'm not a loser. I, I just got to take care of this shit before it yeah, kills yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. And, um, dude, and here I am now hanging out with, with Darian and Andy and fucking Darian. I've known there Darian you a long time. You yeah, know, I've known we you. met uh, we met Strung in, Out Record. We met in uh, 2000, Maybe, I met you. Yeah, yeah I think it was 2000. Or, and um, we did uh, Element of Song Defiance, and that was my first... That was my first thing I that ever That was, was your first strung out record, right? My first strung out record, right. yeah. And um I mean it, That's it's, when Chris had long hair. It was not, like down to your waist, right? Yeah, it was I was long hair, you know, full on just <laughs> yeah. Hesher, you know, flowing. Yeah, he's like totally short hair. Yeah. I am still keeping it real. Yeah, okay. I'm kinda, <laughs> Darius I'm kinda keeping over it real. It. I'm cool. kinda <laughs> over it. Maybe I'll go your route. Chris. Yeah, but uh yeah, man, but I, when I met you, yeah, that was I mean shit, man, when I did that album, I was I mean, because I, I grew were, up. Were, did they give you like a little bit of a hazing when you joined? <laughs> well, speaking of hair, yeah, they gave me a hazing where there's a point where they they wanted me to cut my hair. You know, yeah, and, I can uh, imagine they all have like totally super short hair. Yeah, like and they're you know especially Jordan. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, uh, that's you, why he wanted you to cut your hair. Yeah, he wanted you to save it for him. Yeah, but uh, yeah, you know, he, yeah, Jordan would. If Jordan could grow hair, he'd be rocking it for sure. <laughs> Trust me, he would. He would. It's all good. He'd be rocking the long hair. I know he would. But uh, I love the guy. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's a point where those guys offer me um, two grand to cut my hair. No like, way! I swear to God. Yeah. Hey, well, did you ever see that? Uh, you the, said the no. Pan- I said no. Did you ever see <laughs> the, the Pantera um, home video stuff? Oh yeah, he's I, like, lo- I offer love the, the guy like five grand to eat the cake. Oh yeah, oh yeah, dude, big Val. I, I actually, he didn't finish it, dude. I actually, it's funny you say that. I actually met him. We were flying from Amsterdam 
back to Los Angeles and uh, Dantig was on our flight and Big Val, that guy, yeah, Big Val. he was working with them and I met him and I met Tommy Victor because Tommy Victor plays for Dantig and he's, you know, in prong and Tommy's actually a pretty good friend of mine now too but uh, I met them all at the airport. We flew back and Jordan and Big Val and I were in the back of the plane talking for like five hours so yeah. I was getting all the dirt on like all the like commentary <laughs> all on the Pantera videos but That's, he said yeah. that one with the cake where he lost I'm like yeah you know what's up with that he's like dude he's like, they didn't show where like like an hour before I had two had, like, some two giant food. plates of catering <laughs> yeah, and, and, then, totally. like, and then the cake comes out he's like oh dude like I can't do this cake yeah. and I'm like Five yeah, grand. This is creative editing. Kind yeah, of exactly. But uh, yeah, two grand. I got to offer two grand to cut my hair. Dude. But um, my my whole thing was like, you know, I just got in this punk rock band. You know, like my favorite band. One of my favorite. Yeah, bands. it was, was kind of cool though, because you yeah. were like, you know, I was the, you, you I was kinda, punk rock. You were I was, like, sort I of a metalhead when you got yeah, in the band, totally. right? You know, so um, that's how like because we we started talking. You were like, oh, I'm like, I like this band, that band. And I go, what? Yeah. Why, why <laughs> are you in this band? <laughs> 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 yeah, that's why we all hung out and got. Yeah, I remember we had, we had a few nights we'd go hang out and go to bars. Me, you, and John Cordia. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'd go out and go. Uh, this this the Wild Goose. Is that what it's called? Or did we go there? <laughs> yeah, oh, wow. we, we went to the, we went to the Wild Goose one night. That's a little we, more than a bar. Yeah, that was it was a it was a bar with with the ladies. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we, I remember you. Needless to say, I have no recollection. Of this. <laughs> yeah, I barely Needless remember, but I remember we were fucking hammered. You, you, the three of us, you and John and I. We just we were getting smashed. We went to like a few different bars, hopping, and then we and driving there. Of course, that, too, that guy was crazy. How he was like this total out of his mind, but like <laughs> super techy guy. Yeah, he's he, he brought those things. We we had those dummy loads for the guitar. Oh yeah, tracks. yeah. Tracks and that, dude, still to this day, that was the loudest I ever had <laughs> a guitar for recording. It oh was yeah, so, so insanely. Yeah, loud. he brought that that Mesa Boogie Coliseum. 3000. Yeah. yeah, and remember those resistors that he had? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah those Jeez. giant resistors. That yeah, was he's crazy. a. I love that guy. He's he's been one of my What's best he friends. He he's doing? um he lives in San Diego now. He works for a a, a company that's he's working on breast cancer research oh, for a while. He's wasting his life. Yeah. He, should, be, he <laughs> yeah. should totally be like a guitar tech. Yeah, but yeah, he's 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 a genius. He's like one of the smartest guys I've yeah, ever met in my a, life. He's like totally out there. Yeah, just just total genius. You know, like super smart guy and just hilarious and just like super knowledge and crazy music. You know, and yeah, tons yeah. of death metal. Like, yeah, totally. He loves he loves super deicide. Loves he's deicide. All that Glenn stuff. Benton all the way. You know, yeah. and uh. Cannibal Corpse, you know. But, so, uh, are you? Uh, do you do any like side projects with with uh, uh, other people? I mean, you know a ton of different band members and stuff. You yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm doing a lot of stuff where, um, um, I mean, with band stuff, I've been doing no, no side projects yet. I'm working on stuff like ideas, yeah, and I'm starting to jam. But um, I, I've done like like a lot of studio work. Cool. With uh, with with Matt Hyde oh, yeah, recently, yeah, and I, cool, I yeah. done. St- I worked. I played bass in some bands. Uh, CDs. I mean, I'm not listed on the album, but um, there's there's some bands. You're the, there. you're the secret. I'm the, like I'm the Captain secret. Midnight. Yeah. <laughs> when you tell, <laughs> when you tell, tell the up? bass player that was killer. You can go home now. Yeah. And then you go, hey Chris, can you come over tonight, man? Fix this I, I like, dude. You have the best band names so far, Captain Midnight. Yeah. <laughs> That's fucking awesome, dude. <laughs> Captain Midnight, what? Furious Fang, yeah. Meth Monk. Um, yeah, but I played on uh, some some pretty awesome albums. That, um. The band uh, Parkway Drive, I play in their yeah, new album. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, their, so. their new album's incredible, and uh, I play bass in their album. Just help them out because you know they're you know Matt Hyde to their album. I'm really good friends with Matt Hyde. And where, where are those guys from? Uh, they're from Byron Bay, Australia. Byron Bay, okay. Yeah, yeah. but uh, super super awesome guys. Guys, like yeah, they, I mean cool guys, but they're like. Uh... Did they have like a bunch of demos on GarageBand or something? They they might have. I, I I've heard of them before. They're, they have GarageBand like wired, dude. Like yeah. Ninja GarageBand guys. Yeah, they they probably are. They're they're really smart guys, really awesome, sweet guys, and just talented as hell too. And yeah. I, I had a really good time. I was only in there for like a week or two weeks hanging out with those guys, but I just you know went through and ripped it out. And um, and then um, yeah, then there's this band called Holy Grail. Oh, wow. uh, they're uh, you'd love them, dude. Straight insane shredding metal band <laughs> like insane like it, it's like it's like racer x but like way better just cool like rad vocals cool you know but um i played like five i think like five songs on their on their new album on bass those oh. guys are awesome they're awesome dudes holy grail check them out I'll and and parkway out, yeah. drive parkway drives album just came out so trying to do side work like that and just voiceover work and uh, acting and stuff. That's my my main oh, wow. my main yeah. thing is acting. You totally have that look, like actor look. Oh, a little thank bit. you. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm working on it. Yeah, I mean, my, my thing <laughs> a is a little you know, bit. You I, totally I'm, have it a little does, bit. <laughs> no, he does because he's like because he, you you post a lot of pictures of yourself and it looks like 
you can tell like it looks posed but you can tell it wasn't posed like you, you look totally photogenic oh like, thank you yeah people well, take uh, pictures of you all the time for some weird reason <laughs> <laughs> my main thing is i knew i had a you know a serious problem with addiction and um that so was, you that figured was... you get in entertainment world yeah, yeah exactly. that's, 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 like, that's like that's like Yingbe well. going i got a huge coke problem i'm moving to miami <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so yeah. rad. Oh, yeah. Dude, yeah. You know, usually what we do is we do like the first segment with uh, the guest and then the, the second segment we do with just me and Andy. But I mean, this is pretty fun. Guess what? Out, Guess what? So I'm not, go, I'm not, not going you. anywhere. I'm yeah. not going, <laughs> not going anywhere. anywhere. Do Lock that. the doors. <laughs> <laughs> I, f- I thought this was going to suck because you refused to dr- drink the monster drink <laughs> in the beginning. That's a ritual, but maybe it's going to be pretty cool. This is going on the cutting room I, floor. I got for something sure. gnarly for you, you ready I, for this? I, I got some gnarly too for you this is way gnarly this is <laughs> you, you know like when when people talk about like old russian women or like east german women mm-hmm. remember that and you, you're go you're like i would see the swim team and go whoa those are those women are gnarly. yeah like they should put them at the border with like ak <laughs> but this is gnarly check check out this story First of all, just the title is going to blow you out of the water. <laughs> Russian woman attacked by wolf, comma, axes it to death. <laughs> <laughs> that is so rad. Oh my God, that's like, dude. That, should, that, that right there could be a metal band. Dude, that, 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 <laughs> like that's album another, title. Yeah, that's, in the, that's the album title. Yeah. <laughs> oh my, these are... So check it out. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce this town in Russia. But <laughs> beware of 56-year-old Russian women with axes. I totally, <laughs> Guitar totally axes? back that. That's totally <laughs> accurate. A lone wolf attacked Aishat <laughs> Ma- what? <laughs> Maxidova <laughs> outside her sister's home in Russia's province of whatever in the North Caucasus Mountains. That, those are tough people, too. Isn't yeah. that where like all those invading tribes came from? I think and, so. And uh, sure. the animal bit the farmer on her arm and her leg, and she fell to the ground. You'd think you fall to the ground, it's over. Yeah. It's going to go yeah. For, yeah. Your ne- for your neck yeah, and your done. toes. But somehow, <laughs> she fell to the ground crying out for help from other villagers. No one was in earshot. Usually, no, normally, that's a death sentence for yeah. any normal human. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she reached for an axe she had brought along to repair a fence, and with remarkable aplomb, she hit the wolf over the head several times until his teeth unclenched. <laughs> oh, so the wolf was, like, grabbing onto her the whole time. Jesus. Like, wow. The wolf so later lucky. died. <laughs> I the wolf sought Max own medical Sudova attention has become a hero in the Caspian Sea province that lies <laughs> east of Chechnya <laughs> she was still being treated for a wounds Tuesday at a local hospital after this week's wow. in- incident doctors said she's recuperating well I mean that is just That's super gnarly. gnarly I think she brought that axe I mean, yeah, I mean, dude, I, I kinda, she brought yeah, the axe that, to repair a fence that totally fits in with the whole yeah. Russian yeah. kind of <laughs> where's that come into play, yeah, I an like axe that. to repair a fence yeah, yeah. She didn't bring a hammer for and nails. Everything. Yeah, Axe to hammer nails. Yeah. Can, I, can you fix my? So, I mean, that that fits in good with the Russia's whole. You know, they have Putin as the president. He's like always like wrestling bears and shit. You know, he's like, <laughs> dude, have you seen the bears that play ice hockey in Russia? No, like no. the videos, dude. Look the stuff up. It's, have you played in Russia? <laughs> no, we've never played in Russia yet. We haven't had the the chance yet. There's bears on ice skates playing That's hockey. so rad. Dude, it's incredible. You have to look, yeah, look they, this up they've on YouTube. Always had, uh, they've he's always had some... They have some insane things out there. Killer with bears. Yeah, because they, they have like wrestling bears and like boxing <laughs> bears and stuff like <laughs> dancing. It's yeah, I, I, I want to go there. Yeah, we, we've... Starting out, never been to Russia yet. I mean, we're... Uh, What's no, the what's the most remote place you played? Wow, um, my my house in Simi Valley. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty <laughs> desolate. Yeah, it was. What, a, did you, have um, you guys played in Iraq or anything like that? Uh no, nothing like that. I mean, the I say Queenstown, New Zealand, which is like the southern most city in the southern island yeah, of yeah. New Zealand, and it, it's a beautiful. It's like ski resort, like Vale, like just incredible. But it's like the closest I've ever been to the South Pole, like in my life, and it's freezing, it freezing cold. Yeah, fucking freezing. Wow. But I was I was there in winter time too. I was yeah. in July. Okay, so here's a good one. Th- this is pretty. This is pretty cool. Um, public humiliation. <laughs> this is <laughs> this judge punished Walmart a motorist flashers. by by ordering her to to hold an idiot sign. 
I mean, I think we should do more of that here instead of just locking people up. Just yeah, go. just give them a sign to hold out for like a week on the freeway. A motorist who drove on the pavement to avoid a school bus was ordered to stand by a road with the sign warning people about idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Sheena Hardin, 32, was caught on camera driving past a parked bus as children got off. Oh, my God. So a bus driver caught her illegal act on a mobile phone and contacted the police. Well, there you go. She thought she got away with it. A judge in Cleveland told her to spend two hours holding a placard at a busy road junction. In freezing weather, she served the first hour of her punishment today and will carry out the second hour tomorrow. This is what her sign said. <laughs> Only an idiot would drive on the sidewalk to avoid a school bus. Where is this at? Cleveland. Uh, Cleveland. That is, uh, another, I think that's another, totally rad. Another story in Ohio. Yeah. But oh. I mean... Dude, that is, they should do more of that. Just like shame people. Into yeah, like, I mean, uh, I mean, whatever. You know, if work. you go to jail, you're, you're not really, you're, like most people are just like, whatever. Yeah. So that, if you had to hold a sign up all day that said, I'm yeah, an it's, idiot. Yeah, it's going to hit you more. <laughs> gonna, There's an update, though, I, I read today was that um, she was smoking and on her cell phone the whole time. So Sweet. the judge made her do it again. Awesome. <laughs> no, she, he should make her make a new sign. <laughs> totally. Only an idiot would do this while I'm supposed to be serving <laughs> public That's awesome. Service. Yeah, that's definitely a, a new method. I like that story. This uh, Missouri mother uh, says, woman arrested for giving her daughter, 13 years old, meth <laughs> f- <laughs> five or six times as the girl would otherwise throw a fit. Yeah, this fits into, we kind of have sort of a theme. I don't know if you heard the other episodes, but there's a little bit of a bad parenting <laughs> thing that we got to throw in yeah. on everyone. <laughs> Every single so, uh, this is way super in the bad parenting yeah. category. Um. Yeah, you know, no matter what your kid is doing, you should never, ever feed them meth. <laughs> yeah. Never. So what? She was hooked on meth because she was um, throwing a fit? It says um, she was charged with two counts of endangering the welfare of a child for allegedly giving her 13-year-old daughter methamphetamine several times over the summer. Um, according to court documents, the teen told investigators her mother gave her the drug more times than she could remember. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> awesome jesus which is two yeah <laughs> dude that's kind of a he said she said but bottom line is no you i don't, don't think it's a he should i don't think the kid's said, gonna make said. that up 13 <laughs> 13 year old said she would either smoke meth snort it or hot rail it <laughs> 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 which oh, entails dude. using a glass pipe oh, to God. inhale the smoke i mean dude First of all, if she's making it up, how would you know about hot rail? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah that, that's yeah, that's like saying, that that's like specific, <laughs> specific yeah, that's, content. That's like, specific. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. Like, that's, like, that's like getting deep into the you know the art. <laughs> that's like culture. the art of it. Yeah, that's like yeah. That lady should have her kid taken away forever. Yeah, that's, that lady should that's probably horrible. Be shot. That's absolutely horrible. She should just like permanently pick up trash on the freeway for the rest of her life. <laughs> for the rest of her life. Yeah, that's. <laughs> okay, so I like I'm I'm totally like fascinated with super old people and especially people like around a hundred age, you know. Uh-huh. And uh, I like this story a lot. Centurions, are they called centurions? Centurions, yeah, yeah centurions, Cent- yeah. Centuri- centurion. centurion. Sounds like you just made me say like Roman soldier. Yeah, it's, like, <laughs> it's like some Minotaur or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> this says, uh, "Granny, get your gun. Meet the fierce huntress who still loves shooting turkeys and deer at age ninety-seven. <laughs> nice. Granny, and get your she's gun. She's got like a another band name. She's got like a shotgun. It looks like. <laughs> That's pretty gnarly. I mean, to be ninety-seven and not have a shot and knock you over. She's like sitting in a folding metal chair." That's pretty pretty gnarly. That's it's awesome. pretty rad. She's in camo. See, check it out. <laughs> oh, dude, that's incredible. <laughs> that's the, like so a, awesome. Like the total flying J <laughs> trucker yeah, hat. She she, was, like, she got that at flying J. A yeah. dollar. She it's like cost a dollar. <laughs> that and she's rad. That's kind of like how my grandma was. Except she didn't shoot that much. But <laughs> you guys know about the, I think there's she like would have. there's like there's like a super flying J. I think it's in. I, I almost I just want to maybe because we're saying Ohio hey, just so much. Say, just interrupt you for a second. Check out her trophy wall. Oh my god, <laughs> dude, she is that not is fucking around. Me- she's metal, dude. She I bet is she not listens messing to like, around, dude. Yeah, I bet she listened to At the Gates. <laughs> look at <laughs> look at what the heck is that? Is that like an old wow, picture of her in a, a fort? Wow, or is that one of those like duck things? Like yeah, crow's nest, dude. Duck yeah, she, she's way into it. That's like Duck Dynasty stuff. Yeah, she dude. puts on that King, is she puts on King Diamond and goes out and goes hunting. Yeah, yeah. Ninety-seven years old, <laughs> 97 year old knocking them down. Ninety-seven years old 
packing. (laughs) Beware. Check this out. As a 10-year-old girl, Katie Watson picked up the gun for the first time to shoot a rabbit. I guess she got hooked. (laughs) (laughs) It all it takes is just that one time, and then you're hooked. So, dude, let's talk a little bit about your gig. I mean, what's what's like life on the road like for you? I'm always just like the guy who gets up early and does the AM job, gets my coffee and stuff, and... I, I'm definitely more of a morning person. But how, how does that work with, I mean, if you play late in the day, how's that, are you like totally fried by the time you play? Yeah, you know, sometimes, <laughs> I mean. I mean, I, I, mean, I, work, I, I work with some guys that like wake up at two or three in, in the afternoon, so I'm just trying to get a <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, yeah. that works for you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. The morning I mean, guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the morning guy, I mean, I, I don't wake up at six, but I mean, usually like around eight is nice. Like I yeah. like eight or nine around there yeah. is good. But um, but uh, see, that's, that's not that bad because you're playing – Pretty much during the day. Yeah, the you're day. pretty into the day. You know, but I mean, like what, what about half hour slot? When you know? you're playing, uh, when you guys go out on the road and you're playing like late at night, are you pretty fried by that time? Or yeah, sometimes. I mean, especially on the last tour that we just did, um, the uh, Twisted in the Suburban Wasteland tour, we played both Suburban Teenage Wasteland Blues and That's Twisted gnarly. by Design. We played them both back to back. Holy, that, it was gnarly because we do like Suburban. How, how long was that? Like two hours? No, it was or almost. Yeah, it was. It was like an hour and like hour and thirty minute maybe yeah. around there. And um, it was gnarly, man. Like it was a very conditioning. You know, tour because it was like a thing. It wasn't like a normal set. Like, oh, you know, right, we can right. do f- you know eighteen songs. It was like so. Were you we're like doing when you're like playing? Were you like, man, my fingers are sore? Oh yeah. Well, me, you know, with bass, my right hand, you know, because I'm just going, you know, like the yeah. whole time. Especially <laughs> so, suburban. Suburban's just the entire album just. So like, I was like, after like an hour and a half, I'm like, oh my hand, you know, like, Jesus. <laughs> Where's the massage? Girl? Yeah, it, it was starting. It was hurting me, you know, but um. It was it was fun, but I'm totally forgetting where I was going. How with long this. did it take for you to hit your stride? Like did, after a few shows, were you kind of locking in yeah, pretty good? Or? Yeah, it did. You know, the, the first show was funny because we didn't really practice that much for it. We because we wow. all knew the song. Sounds still. like a bad idea. Yeah, it was totally. It was <laughs> yeah. The first show was in Portland on the first leg of the tour that I did. The second leg was our friend John. He he filled in for me. Awesome bass player, guy from the band called Such Gold. And um, but the first tour we did, you know, first show was in Portland. We're like, yeah, we just like we like killed it. And then like the next few days, we're like, oh, what do we get ourselves into? <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. What are we doing? <laughs> oh my god! Like and then after like a few days, we're like, no, we're on it. Yeah, you know? you're it yeah. But uh, I think it's kind of like with any tour, you know, you know, you, you kind of shake off the cobwebs and the dust. You know, it's tighten up the screws, get the WD forty out. But I mean, you know, two, get it all. <laughs> two of those uh, two albums back to back is pretty. That's it, pretty it was gnarly. brutal, man. It, I mean, and not like it bad. Like I like mean that like in the metal sense brutal <laughs> but uh, no it was good though and challenging yeah. and, I, and i always like a challenge you know like hence rehab <laughs> I, I like a challenge <laughs> but uh yeah it was uh it was definitely a really really fun tour man and uh you know conditioned the hell out of us and then those guys too when they did the second leg when i was in i call it the hab those guys when i saw those guys like i saw rob and jordan they came and visited me and they're like dude like they're all, we are so tight right now I'm like you got to be oh, like you got to be like cuz we were off the first leg then we had like a week and a half i thought off. you meant they were saying cuz you're not in the band yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean <laughs> no, yeah I wish I was on the second leg, but uh, know what? I, I don't regret anything because I'm glad I did what I did. Yeah, you got to do that. You I'm gotta here get, and get everything together. Yeah, you know, it did the best thing for me. And this company, this organization called Music Cares, is yeah, the one that's that, pretty cool. They're incredible. What, they, what is the deal with that? The, they're this Music Cares is this foundation that uh, funds uh, musicians into rehab. And um, is uh, it is it uh, specifically for rehab or for all different stuff? Yeah, I mean for rehabilitation. Um, they, uh, as far as I know, what I got a you know they call it scholarships. You know they give you and I got a I got a, a scho- yeah, yeah 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 I, I got a full scholarship, scholarship. <laughs> right. to this uh, this one facility in I got in a full, you, yeah that's cool you yeah. can say I got a full scholarship and then just never finish the rest. Yeah. of the <laughs> <laughs> I totally just, I still I, I still owe money for my books. My pamphlets. My pamphlets all fucked up. But uh, yeah, but they're dude they're an incredible. Like, like you know, incredible organization. I've met a lot of really amazing people through you know through the program now. That's killer. And that's, people that's that are you know involved, like even though know, Kevin Lyman's involved with it, like a lot they, of people uh, are. Yeah, how do they get their funding? Um, a lot of people like rehabs, like super Kevin expensive. Lyman. It, it's it's insane. <laughs> you know, it's it's honestly it's a really discouraging thing too because I had times when I went to a place in West Hollywood. You know, I'll leave names out of the places I went to, but um, this place I went to um. You know, I, I heard that I had a bed, you know, through a hookup, you know, and I tried to go to this place and I was desperate, you know, I was like yeah. on a nine day bender, just, you know, it's horrible. I mean, yeah. I'm being honest, I'll yeah. tell you exactly what I did, but I'm, um, and I tried to get in there and they're just like, well, you know, well, we have other people that are they're, waiting in the line like, that have money. And I'm yeah, like, yeah, they're like, oh, we yeah. need to see your bank account. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and it's like, at that point too, you know, it takes a lot for someone 
you know, yeah, to, to take that step and take initially. that step, you know, and you right. know, in strength to show weakness too, and especially yeah. when it comes to something that's really inside of you, like you know, f- right. man, I have a gnarly, gnarly problem. I'm admitting it now. I'm walking the door of this place, and then you get turned away. It it's just like I got really bummed about that, you know. And I was I, obviously I, I left and went out and bought more shit. <laughs> I, did. I, like, oh, I did. I left. I told that guy that too, and I walked out. I'm all right. See you later. I'm, I'm gonna go buy a bottle of Jaeger and you know get some more shit. Yeah. And he says, oh, "Dude, dude, dude." And I'm like, "Later." And I got my car and drove off. And yeah. I did. You should say, "I'm also gonna razor tat your name on my arm." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should have done that too. You know, rehab's very. It's a very expensive thing, and I I feel very grateful that I was lucky enough to have music cares do what they did for me. And I'm very, you know, in debt to them of just, you know, you know, it seems like, uh, I think that's really awesome that they do that, but it seems like in general, they should maybe fund rehab a little more because it's, it's like not a, it's not a waning problem. It's a growing problem. Exactly. Exactly. You know, exactly. If if there's, it worked out great for you because I mean, you're like a well-known musician, but I mean, just think of some random kid that's going, you know what? I've had enough. I need some help, and then get turned away like that. Yeah, exactly. That's screwed. Exactly. Think about the the person who does. <laughs> Is that what yes, happened to you? That's dude? what happened to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the people that don't well, have no, the means. They didn't yeah. turn you away for that. <laughs> I couldn't name them. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, though. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, I I am fortunate enough to have these people on my side. The resources. The resources yeah, I exactly. have available and the people that I have connections I know that got me into this. I'm totally. very grateful totally. and blessed to have that. But and so I mean uh, can any like musician get into that? What do you have to be like in the you have professional to be, band? Yeah, I think it'd be you have to be like in the professional band, not just like a guy who just plays so like the some, Viper in once a week or something like that. Right. You have to be like in a band that has albums. Yeah, because I, I fill out the thing. So, they so ask, like, what Monk are Math gonna... members are Monk, totally Monk not. Math is not going to make it. <laughs> Furious <laughs> Fang is not going to make it either. <laughs> Captain Midnight might. I don't so, know. Uh, <laughs> so that's that's a cool... Uh, I wonder how many people know about that because that's a really good... I think that's a really good... Uh, like, do they have you help them with promotional stuff to kind of give back a little bit like oh here i am now no there you go. <laughs> uh, I, I mean i i try to do that um i met a they should do like a promotional album yeah like a bunch of rehabbed musicians yeah i, I know there. there's definitely like a lot of people i'm meeting through the program i mean one of my one of my good friends now is uh, ernie c from body count and right. um, he's he's part of the program too with Music Cares. He's a tremendous guy. They're actually going to start doing a new album. They're, no uh, way! Yeah, yeah, they're they're, they're awesome, oh. man. Yeah, yeah. He's all involved in Music Cares, and it's really cool. Like, I have dreams of doing more things in my life with acting and more music and stuff. And I want to give back more to that community, you know, and put money in no, that, that's you know, because that's, that's you know, it's a it's a tremendous thing. If I can help anyone out, I'll. It's kind of like the things I think of the the means of when when you are an addict and you're you go crazy like you'd ride your bike like twelve miles with no seat to go get drugs and like <laughs> yeah. you, know, you like hop. You know what? So it's pretty amazing because you, if you think about all the energy and resources and and uh, inventiveness that goes into getting high, yeah, 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 just exactly, imagine yeah. if you like you <laughs> put know that, put that towards some something constructive thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And that, exactly. that's exactly like that zeal. You know, so you, you have. just think of all the tweakers that could have cured cancer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it, totally, one hundred percent. Yeah, like that's so. It's on the money. Yeah, yeah. Why not just put that the other way, right? And, and helping. But you people. can't really tell an addict, hey, why not? Why don't you just get your shit together? You can't. Yeah. I mean, they just have to be ready and. Yeah, that's the thing know, too. Get, you know, reach that point in their life where they go, "This is just so." F- you, yeah, with everyone, <laughs> every you know, every addict's different, but uh, like. Yeah, you have to be. You have to want it, you know. And it's hard. Of course, I've yeah. had. I mean, you can't even start to talk to somebody unless they're at that point. Yeah, exactly. And and I've had plenty of people that just they're like, why can't you just stop? Why? Why? Yeah, and it's exactly. Like, like it's parents, like you don't fucking know. Parents, yeah, you know? like my like, my parents are like, sure. why, why doesn't my kid just choose not to do that? Yeah, I just don't get why you can't just put, have one. Right. Why can't? Why do you have to? Why do you have to have like eighteen bottles? Yeah. <laughs> why do you have just one line? Why are you gonna buy like? Why did I? An why ounce? I found this this mountain of airplane <laughs> bottles behind his bed? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> It's just, it's a really powerful thing, man. And I'm very lucky to be a part, you know, That's very fortunate to be alive and talking, very grateful to be talking to you, you know, and to meet, you know, Andy now. And I know his brother, you know, from the deviates, you know, it's just like life's incredible when you're, you know, if sobriety works for you and it, it, to me, it's working for me tremendously and it's uh, recovery has given me my life back. Right. Yeah. You know? It's awesome and that so, you got, you know, all that taken care of and you yeah, made so, a new start. dude. Exactly. Thank you, man. Thank you. you. But, uh, well, man, thanks for coming down. It's killer. Yeah, and appreciate uh, uh, 
I, I have to plug one more thing. Go ahead. I, I got to do it. <laughs> well, I got to say one more thing. I my uh, my Chris Aiken signature model base came out. Oh, that's through, right. through no Fender way. Squire. Dude, it, it came out I in October. I should have waited to buy my base. I could have just <laughs> got one from you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, I'm, I just that's something I've been really you know stoked and blessed about is um my base came out in October. Uh, it's a Squire, my Squire signature model base by Fender. Uh, but yeah, it's my own my own design. Um, has a strung out astrolox on the headstock. It, what's uh, what's different about it from? Is it like a P base kind of model? It, it, it's it's a P base. It's a it's a straight P base. It has just just a volume knob, no tone, mirrored pickguard. It's white. Um, and I have like like an aged neck. Like it, it's a P. It's all, Whoa, all P base. But like it, it looks like a '70s looking. Like the right. neck's like aged, and it's maple, and it has big block inlays. So it looks like it's a uh, jazz. Cool. It's like jazz inlays, but on a P base. That's cool. So nice. it's cool. You, but, um, you like maple necks? I, I love maple necks. Yeah, I, I'm I have a maple neck base, and I was like, I wonder if I should have got a rosewood. But you're down. You think that's cool? I I'm all about <laughs> it. I mean, I like rose. Rosewoods are great too. Don't get me wrong. But um, yeah, maple necks for me. I just for me they feel better. Hmm. For my for my you know playing you know I like them better. So how do people find the bass? Where do they get them? Um, you can go on you know on the Fender website. Um, they're starting to circulate in all the guitar centers and oh, stores killer, and That's stuff really now. Yeah. And uh, and I'll have I'll do like a premiere at Nam in January. I'll be at Nam and I'll have like doing a lot of you know press for it and stuff like that there too. But so I, you get like point four cents for each bass. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I get that. You know that check whenever you know. Uh, every yeah, three months for a yeah. dollar. I, Actually, it's when, every three you know months. When, yeah. You know what the deal is? When they're small enough, you have to just frame them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like when you get that, like that twelve cents, eighty-seven really. cent check. Yeah, like, exactly. All right. <laughs> yeah, just frame this. All right, man. Well, appreciate it. Hey, Thanks well, thank you guys. Thank you, awesome. Darren. Yeah. Thank you, any of you guys. Killers. Had a wonderful time. Come back anytime and hang. I will. I'll be here in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank Quick you, guys. Days. Well, Andy, another show wrapped up. Wrapped up. Two more weeks. Wrap it up. One. Two more weeks. Yep. I think so. Yeah. Are you all right, dude? You seem kind of like... I'm a little out of it. Yeah. You kind of... Uh, didn't show up today. I know. It's like your first <laughs> didn't debate. show up today. <laughs> it's like your first debate. <laughs> Long drive. Cool yeah. dude. Totally cool dude. Man. You going to go buy him lunch after this? No. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. That's pretty cool. Chris Aiken from Strung Out. That was the rat of him to come by. Yeah, and... dude. Shared a song? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do uh, something off, do? off of uh, Artist Sonic Defiance. We'll do. That's a good one. Good one. And uh, we're out. Thanks for listening. Both of you. We yeah. appreciate it. <laughs> Yeah, and both of you should donate like a thousand dollars so we can keep our SoundCloud account going. That, and we can uh, buy some cameras so you can see how ugly. Yeah, we are. We, we were gonna do video, but since uh, you know we have like zero followers, and we're probably not gonna do it for a long time. <laughs> but uh, so follow us on Twitter at at of Muse and Men. Send us your emails at of Muse and Men at gmail dot com, and like our page on Facebook. Stay up yeah, to date. Well, how can they find the Facebook link? That's a good question. You can uh, actually catch it from the SoundCloud page, and uh, there should be one on YouTube as well. So Stay up to date. Pictures. Share, New and uh, we'll see you in two weeks. Sounds good. Thanks for checking it out. All right. We're out. Peace.